people come to our work for all kinds of reasons. Some people, like you said, have health conditions. Some people want to create a new job, a new career, a new relationship. Uh, some people are craving a mystical experience. Some people just want to understand life from a different perspective. And and I think I think science has become the contemporary language of mysticism. I think it's science that demystifies the mystical. And if you can combine a little quantum physics with a little neuroscience, with neuroendocrinology, with psychoneuroimmunology, the mind-body connection, epigenetics, all of those sciences point the finger at possibility. And <clears throat> if you talk about religion, if you talk about culture, if you talk about tradition, even spirituality, I notice that you divide an audience. But science, in a sense, creates community. So people come for all kinds of reasons. And what I've learned in the last year or so is that uh, what people really want is wholeness. Mm. Um, because when we want something, we're in separation or in lack, right? And so when we started experimenting with doing different scientific measurements, one of the things we started to notice is that when a person somehow connects to something greater, and that has a influence on their nervous system, uh, the side effect is that they feel so whole, so rejuvenated in that moment, so blessed by life in that moment from an inner experience that it's impossible for them to want. I mean, how can you want when you feel whole, right? And so when we started looking at heart coherence and we saw this tremendous changes in, in the, uh, uh, people's ability to be able to sustain a state of mind, a feeling in their heart for an extended period of time. We have data to show you could be sick and do that, you could be a vegetarian and do that, you could be a carnivore and do that, you could be rich, you could be poor, and it doesn't, if you're skinny, overweight, doesn't matter. Once you learn that skill of self-regulation and being able to experience a greater level of wholeness, that if you can create from wholeness instead of separation or lack, you can produce greater effects on the nature of reality. So we came from singularity and in when you're oneness or when you're source, there's no separation between cause and effect. Your thoughts create experiences when you're in oneness. We, we, we journey down the density and now we're really separate from source. And so the what, what happens between cause and effect is called time. So we're here now to prove to ourselves that the divine lives in us. So why not practice shortening time or the interval between cause, the thought, and the effect, the experience? And when you start seeing something appear in your life as a result of you at cause, you start getting more kind, more caring, more loving, more conscious, more present, because you feel more whole. And so people in our work come for a lot of reasons, you know, and yes, uh, they have challenges and health conditions. Uh, but instead of wanting to heal, I want them to learn the formula on how to heal. I want them to learn the formula on how to create reality. I want them to learn the formula that there is a door to other dimensions that they can create independent of any exogenous substance and release latent systems in the brain that causes them to realize they're not a linear being living a linear life. They're a dimensional being living a dimensional life and it only takes one of those experiences where you have an alteration in your identity that you can't go back to being the same person again. Now the game changes now because I've seen this so many times when that person runs into the divine and there's an arousal that takes place in their nervous system. And I'm not talking about a little energy. I'm talking about energy that's so outside of normal. But the arousal isn't coming from fear, which normally creates arousal. It's not coming from aggression, which normally creates arousal. It's not coming from pain. They are running into information. They're running into something profound and the arousal is creating ecstasy. The arousal is creating bliss. The arousal is so profound. The feeling that they're having isn't coming from anything out there. Mm -hmm. It's coming somehow from within them. And they get a taste of that and they're less seduced 
by the outer world. They know where to get it. And now they have a romance with the divine. They have a date with the divine every day because the process of creation in connecting to that field should be ecstatic. The process of healing another person should be bliss because you need to connect to that field and create from the field instead of from matter. So there's so much cool research that changes our mind about that because it's not matter that's emitting a field. It's the field that's creating matter. You teach people to change the field. You change the field, you change matter. And understanding that is a reversal in navigating in a realm beyond space and time that once you can get beyond your attention on your body, get beyond your attention on different objects and people and things at certain times and places in your environment, no longer anticipating the next moment or living in the past, when a person can get trans transcendental beyond their identity, uh, they start passing through an eye of the needle. And that is their connection to that unifying field, that invisible field of energy that actually is connecting everything physical and material. And you can't use your senses when you're there. In fact, when you are there, there's a whole nother set of rules to execute in. There's no place to go. How could you go if there's no space? If there's no space, there's no time. Every thought has a frequency and being able to create from that place is why we're here. And so then when you see a person feel whole and we measure their oxytocin levels, it's not just a little oxytocin. The oxytocin is 200 times normal and oxytocin signals nitric oxide and nitric oxide signals a chemical called the endothelial derived relaxing factor. And that causes the arteries in your heart and your lungs to literally open up. And just like your sexual organs get engorged with energy and fluid and blood, when that center is aroused with the same intensity, you have a fullness in your heart. It's, a, it's physiological. And when oxytocin is released, it's impossible to hold a grudge. You cannot hold a grudge because you wouldn't want to trade this feeling by judging another person. You, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to trade this feeling for any condition in your environment. And this is the beginning of unconditional. This is the beginning of our divinity. So when you have all this energy in your heart and oxytocin levels are elevated, this is a different consciousness. Now, the only thing you want to do is give. You want to say, I feel so amazing and I want you to feel the way I feel. So here, I'll give this to you. So now people come to our work to help others. People come to this work because they're not so interested in the material things, although if it got them here and they learn the formula and they learn how to create, once you get that, now that game's over. Now you want to make a difference. You want to leave a legacy. You want to contribute. You want to help somebody. And we bring children in at the end of the event and we heal them of really serious health conditions and we have really profound and prestigious universities in the United States saying what in the heck are you guys doing like we want to come and study this because it's so phenomenological now you're being a part of something great so yeah it may be the sports car it may be the new relationship it may be healing your body but then when that happens now what what are you going to do now exactly. I mean what are you going to do when you have everything what are you going to do you're, you're, the next thing is how am I going to how am I going to make a difference we're wired to care for one another, to be kind to one another, to heal one another, to shine for one another. So to show other people they can shine, that's what the living organism does when they're not in fear, when they're not in aggression and hatred and prejudice and all those things that create division. So, so when that person runs into that experience of the divine and their brain goes into an aroused state of gamma, they're getting a biological upgrade. I can guarantee you that some health condition will be eliminated because they just ran into wholeness and their body will become more whole. So they could do all the diets, all the chemotherapy, all the nutrition, everything, and they're handling that health condition matter to matter. And when you change that, anything in your life matter to matter, there's a long space between cause and effect, between it's thought dense. and experience. It's some, sometimes so long you forget what your dream was. Mm -hmm. But when you run into it, and you produce an immediate effect, now you're doing it in no time. It's happening in the moment. And if you can capture that 
and you see the brain go into these elevated states of coherent gamma patterns. 200, 300, 400, 500 standard deviations outside of normal. That person can't make their brain do that. That's a subjective experience that we're capturing objectively. And we say to that person, what was that? And it's inevitable. They don't, they don't have the words to describe what a mango tastes like. They don't have the words to describe what the divine is. You gotta just experience it. Only with the heart you can hear really well. And the words of wisdom can flow into you. Use an exercise from finger yoga called Madra. In order to listen with the heart, it is important that both hemispheres of the brain are switched on. Place your thumbs on the ring and small fingernail. Hold this Madra all the time while listening to the talk. <laughs> 